My name is Audrey Joey Zibo. I'm the co-founder and executive director of Falcon Corporation Limited. I'm the president of the Nigerian Gas Association. Personally, I'm not a subscriber to the principle of the fact that raising children is a woman's job. I think that we're supposed to parent, and that means um, both father and mother. But reality tends to be that most of the time it is young women who have to deal with school runs and hospital visits and open day and things like that. So sometimes that is perceived then to mean that a woman is more distracted in the workplace, which is not true because most women come to work literally with their A-game on and they give their best all the time. However, it's just the way many times the corporate world tends to be skewed. So that's a bit of a challenge because as you go higher up in the organization, your um, the requirements to be available at very strategic points in time play a role in how you are perceived and the value to the organization. But reality is that as you go higher in corporate settings, higher in management, there is a need for more emotional intelligence and part of that is understanding the dynamics of office politics, office relationships, looking for champions, those who will champion your cause. Um, just finding some very strategic contacts that you make sure you're visible to so that when things come up, you are always you know, front burner in their minds as to who could possibly fill certain roles. Fast forward to 2005, we had uh, venture capital investors come into the business. It just kind of put a, it challenged everything I had known experientially, it challenged everything I had known by way of knowledge and intuition in terms of you know, what I could deliver to the business. And um, because I'm someone who has a continuous improvement mindset, I realized that with their coming in, we brought in a higher competency of people, both management and staff. And therefore, as the leader of the organization, there was an imperative for me to also upskill. Now, a few years before this, I had come to know about LBS, very much admired the program, couldn't afford it at that point in time. <laughs> so once they came in, it was very clear to me that if I was to continue to be relevant in my organization the way that I wanted to be, I needed to do something different. And so I took a chance on the LBS program. I can tell you that within a week or two, everybody in the organization knew something was different. My thinking shifted. Um, I will never forget the ABP course, the analysis of business pro um, problems fundamentally shifted my mindset about how to look at issues. Um, I remember operations management. I remember um, when we had the SPEP, social political environment of business. I mean, it was just like for the first time, I realized that there was a bigger world than the four walls of my building. Challenges quite a lot. Uh, when we came in, we started the company in 1994, on the 4th of June actually, so in another few days it will be 25 years. Um, the first thing for us was we didn't have any money, clearly. We just had our little savings and we made the traditional entrepreneurial mistakes of taking the money and spending it on a prominent office not that it was a big office, but we felt it had to be on a major road, so it was too expensive. We, you know, it was just a ridiculous waste of whatever little resources that we had. But um, we came out and found that what was more important was not where we were located, but we actually had to go and make the industry believe that we had value to offer. And that then was the second biggest challenge for us in the sense that at the point in time we started the business, um, oil and gas industry, all they knew was where are your foreign technical partners? And here we were, this man and his wife saying, we're starting this company, wholly indigenous, we're telling you that we can do this. So it was a huge challenge, we're not taking very seriously. Um, proverbial catch-22 situation, everybody wants to know what kind of jobs have you done before? And the question is, if you don't give me a job, how can I tell you what kind of jobs I've done before? So no experience, no work, no work, no experience. Um, we came into an industry and found that there were many vested interests. We came in and found that people did a lot of relationship type transactions and we didn't have um, any of those types of 
relationships at that point in time. For many years, we didn't understand that we needed to actively build networks. Uh, when we did get some little jobs here and there, we barely had money to finance them. The banks wouldn't lend. And um, I always say in retrospect that now I know better that if I was a bank back then, I wouldn't lend to myself either because the banks are managing other people's money and there's a huge accountability to uh, their investors and stakeholders. So there was that. We couldn't hire quality staff because we couldn't afford them. Uh, at that point in time too, we're faced with a multiplicity of agencies of government coming to tax us for operational permits, business premises, the TV license, though we had no TV. I mean, there were just so many things that kept coming at us um, every single day. So we were living in firefighting mode for quite a long time. So the first thing to deal with as any up and coming entrepreneur is the integrity of your system, whether it's from record keeping to how you do business to how you transact with your partners internally and externally, and just constantly giving out your best. Um, I know we live in an environment where more than ever before, sometimes it's easier to just do the half measure and get by. But you know what? I saw this um, expression somewhere. It said that. Um, superiority can never bow down to mediocrity mediocrity needs to rise that's what drives my life i will not compromise my standards because it seems everybody else is doing this and it's working i simply i won't even sign a letter till today if you use b-e-e-n instead of b-e-i-n-g i maintain my standard i won't say it's just one word and it's not worth the ink fundamentally if i were to advice anyone how do you make sure that your business maintains um, the longevity um, and all that it would be build an institution build an institution as early as possible you need to depersonalize your business in my own view when we talk about sustainability in this company i mean i have four children i'm not looking for any of them to join this company unless they want to because i'm trying to build an institution whereby in the next hundred years this company is still here. Maybe three, five percent will be owned by myself and my family for posterity's sake. Not necessarily that my children are working here. They don't have to be, they just have to be connected with the history of it. Therefore, we have to be careful the things that we do, even as family businesses. We must still work within systems, within structures, with well-defined policies, well-articulated policies and processes that will ensure sustainability.